Hello students, uh, you can find this presentation on your website on resonomics.eu European Union lesson 14. So I just thought I'd add this as uh, we're all in confinement as a little comment uh, about this new uh, crisis. Uh, first of all, the, the COVID-19 crisis is a social, economic and political crisis. It's been, it has created a shock to the European system, to the world economic system, uh, as did the 2008 subprimes crisis that we've seen in class. So my, my question is, how will the EU institutions, national governments and European people react once the virus has run its course? Uh, will we see another neoliberal reaction to the shock? And I strongly recommend that you, you read The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein. There's a link on the page if you click on it. Uh, as we have seen with the subprimes crisis resulting in a European austerity program, greater inequality and a European predatory model, which I showed you in the previous video, as the rich countries benefit at the expense of the poorer countries. Who will pay the debt? Will the EU change direction to invest in society and a green economy? So uh, here are uh, a few bits of data. Firstly, we can see here uh, a, uh, a poster on the debt quake in the Eurozone. So basically, uh, in green, you have the debt of the European Union in 2000, and in red, you have the debt in 2010. Uh, so you can see uh, how much our crisis, uh, how much the subprimes crisis has already affected our, our debt system, which we're all paying for now. The uh, the current European debt crisis is still linked to what happened in uh, 2008. And here I, I've just done a, a little bit of research to show how the direction of debt. Now, we all know that for Eurozone countries like France, Germany, Greece that I've chosen here as sources, uh, that the stability pact limit is 60% debt to GDP, which was more or less online uh, before the subprimes crisis. And we can see that in France, public debt in 2007, before the subprimes crisis, was 65% not bad. It then had to bail out its banks uh, and that the public debt in 2012 was 96%. And in 2017, 98%. And uh, the current Prime Minister of France estimates that 2020, the public debt will be 115%. Now that has to be serviced, that debt has to be uh, serviced. And at the moment, France has a very cheap uh, debt. In other words, the interest rate is very low. Um, other countries have been hit by... Uh, very high interest rates when people don't want to, to buy their bonds. We can see for Germany, 64%, very similar to France uh, in 2007, up to 81% in 2012, then uh, back down to 65% in 2017. They have a very strong export program, so they've managed to reduce their debt. And it's then uh, estimated to be 80% in 2020. Greece, uh, which you can see uh, on my lessons if you look at the Greece debt crisis, Greece was actually borrowing quite cheaply uh, for years. Its, its debt was at around 100%, so 2007, 100%. And then uh, it then, by 2012, by 2012, it rocketed up to 160%. Then, with the amazing help of the uh, Troika, the IMF, and the 
um, uh, the, the European Central Bank. It's got worse, up to 176%, and it's estimated to be at 183% in 2020, which is unsupportable, especially as their interest rate on their 10-year bonds is way higher than that of France and Germany. These figures come for Germany and Greece from trading economics. And the percentages are as a percentage of, uh, percentage of debt to GDP. So one of the problems we're going to have uh, post-COVID-19 uh, uh, is we, we, we know that growth will be falling Countries at the moment are in depression as uh, people are not working, they are confined to stay in their homes, and the um, pre-COVID rates already were very weak. France 0.8% growth, Germany 0.4% growth, Greece minus 0.7% growth, um, and that the current economic contraction with the COVID-19 will mean higher expenses in debt servicing, Higher expenses in social security. Fortunately, we're very lucky in France uh, that in France the government is paying 80% of salaries for those who have been uh, laid off due to the confinement. Uh, better off being in France than in the United States where I don't think they have any social security at all at the moment. Higher unemployment rates. Uh, companies will f uh, collapse with the COVID-19 Shops won't be able to cover all their expenses as they've been closed. And, of course, all this will mean lower tax revenues. Less income tax, less corporation tax, less VAT. So uh, it is inevitable in Europe that we are going to have an increased debt that will have to be paid off after the crisis. The... Uh, looking, looking after patients, obviously you need hospitals and since the 19, late 1970s with a new neoliberal paradigm which was started by Reagan and Thatcher, countries have been changing their public health systems uh, and running them like a company. Well, you don't ask a fireman how much profit he's made during the month. You don't ask someone who's a soldier if they're making a profit, but we're treating the health system as if it were a company that it should make a profit and everything has been um, put into financial terms. Each operation has a value and we have a massive decline. Here we can see the average OECD health expenditure growth rates from 2000 to 2010. This is public and private, and we can see that growth has collapsed um, and that basically countries are trying to uh, decrease uh, money on health spending. And in France, it's amazing that we've had months and months of nurses and doctors on strike before COVID-19 arrived because they didn't have the um, the, the, the materials, they didn't have the staff, they didn't have the rooms to be able to run a decent health service. And the government said, well, there's no money. And this is not just in France. Here we can see the average annual growth in health spending across the OECD in real terms. That means taking into account for inflation from 2000 to 2010. Uh, and uh, we can see in light blue at the top, then you've got from 2000 to 2009. And in black, you've got from 2009 to 2010. And you can see that uh, across the world, that health expenditure is decreasing. Well, there was a very interesting video by Bill Gates made four years ago saying that the next battle will not be against a military target, it will be against a virus. And he said very clearly, why is the United States spending so much on military defense and totally ignoring the public health system? Uh, and there we go, he was absolutely right.
Now, obviously, different countries have suffered uh, from the COVID-19 uh, virus with mortality. But what is interesting is to see the decline in hospital beds available per 1,000 inhabitants. And as countries uh, like in France, they say, oh, we're doing our best, we're doing our best, we can see that from 1980 to 2018, in 1980, there were 11 hospital beds available for 1,000 inhabitants. And under the new economic paradigm, in 2018, there are six beds. They have reduced the number of beds available for their population by two. And they have suffered 21,000 deaths. Germany, uh, the, the 10.4 beds, that was the, the, the data comes from 1990, not 1980, and they have reduced their availability down to eight beds, but they've had far fewer uh, deaths. Also, perhaps because they use a different technique, they use testing rather than just confinement. So 5,300 COVID deaths, this is the data I got from today. Uh, uh, United Kingdom was already very poor. It's strange because United Kingdom had the very first national health service in the world. And in 1980, they had six beds per thousand inhabitants, and it's been drastically reduced to two and a half beds per thousand inhabitants. And they've got 18,000 deaths because they simply cannot cope with the number of people. They can't, uh, uh, they don't have enough space in hospital to look after them. In Italy, where, which was the first European country hit really hard, well, They've reduced their hospital bed rate from 9.6 beds to 3.2 beds, and they've suffered 25,000 deaths. Will the world, will Europe wake up and realize that health is not a company? It's not business. Health is like your army. You need it to protect your population. So the question is, where to next once this virus has gone? And this reminds me very much of the 1929 Wall Street crash and the Great Depression that led to 25% of the American population being unemployed with no Social Security. But the difference is that in 1932, during the Great Depression, the American people had a choice between uh, President Hoover's austerity plan, saying basically... Uh, the economy is doing badly, therefore we should spend less and, do this, uh, and provide an austerity plan, reduce salaries. Or Roosevelt's New Deal, which was very much based on Keynesian ideals, whereby Roosevelt introduced a minimum wage. He introduced unions and union rights. He produced public jobs to provide people with security. Uh, and fortunately, in the USA, they chose the latter. They chose uh, massively Roosevelt's New Deal. Now, after the 2008 subprimes crisis, in Europe, many politicians called for a new Green Deal for Europe. They based this directly on Roosevelt's idea of a New Deal. But they wanted an environmentally responsible, ecologically responsible, responsible deal of investment in green technology and green living in Europe. And what we got was a German-led austerity plan. And I say that quite clearly. This was led, uh, we had that the, the, the people in power, in the Commission, certainly um, in the, 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 the Euro group uh, were basically led by Germany. And we had an austerity plan, which was disastrous to, uh, to my point of view. And to quote from the European political party, DiEM25, uh, DiEM25's prediction that Europe would either be democratized or disintegrate is more relevant than ever. That is why our reaction to the COVID-19 crisis has, to been, has been, to say clearly and unequivocally, to Europe unify or die. And there's a link to DiEM25 if you want to see who they are and what they're doing. So without wanting to over-politize the issue, but then I, am, I teach politics and economics, I have not found a better simple solution than that suggested by DiEM's, uh, DiEM25's three plan. And this is not just recent. They have a very simple 
uh, plan issue 1 trillion euros of ECB euro bonds. Now we've looked at the issue of euro bonds before. Uh, people, people incorrectly think that why should we pay the debt of other countries. You're not paying the debt, you're simply borrowing money more cheaply and you avoid the privatization of debt which we've seen with the Greek debt crisis. Inject a 2,000 euro European solidarity cash payment to people. People need money. It's not the same thing as the New Deal. The New Deal provided jobs, which, is, which provides security. A cash payment, uh, are people going to spend it? But it, it, it's, the money is not difficult to find. All you need to do is tax speculation. There's lots of money. Stop, stop tax avoidance. That's about um, 400 billion euros. Not too difficult to find. Number three, introduce a European green recovery and investment program. That is very much Roosevelt New Deal uh, idea, except that it is based on ecological principles. So... If we allow the unelected, undemocratic and secretive Eurogroup to decide what happens, and they are the ones who at the moment have been deciding uh, how much money should be given to the countries uh, to, to buy their bonds so that the bond market remains stable, then the EU is probably going to fail. Uh, as I've said before, as, as once more the COVID-19 shock will lead to more austerity, greater inequality and greater interest zone predation and debt control. What we've seen since 2008 is increased competition. You've seen other presentations I've given on, the, on debt control of the richer countries like uh, France and Germany borrowing cheaply and lending money at very high interest rates to the pigs. Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece and Spain. Uh, it's a model that cannot work. We've reversed the model whereby there is a transfer of wealth from rich to poor and we're now uh, basically milking the poor to provide more profits for the rich. But if only, like the Americans in 1932, the EU would allow us, the people of Europe, to choose our destiny, we unfortunately are not given that choice. And uh, uh, I only hope that the European Union institutions will wake up and redirect the uh, ship uh, European Union towards looking after the society of Europe and uh, uh, reducing the neoliberal competitive, uh, what I call uh, economic Darwinism that is destroying us at the moment. We will see what happens. I am a little bit skeptical, I must confess. Uh, this this is related to your lesson. You can find this presentation on resonomics.eu, European Economics, Lesson 14.